Here we have a local scene and I have a 10 meter digital elevation model loaded. And here it is, we are in the Glacier National Park area and I'm draping the world imagery over the scene. And the navigator button in the scene is much easier if you expand it for full controls. Everything is relative to the center of your scene. So when you, for instance, turn down your mouse button that now we're rotating around the center of the scene or we can change our viewpoints. We can make the scene more realistic by giving the sky a sky color. We can do that under map properties and under general here the background color. Let's choose a pale blue and it looks already better. Of course this is nothing different from what you are used to in Google Earth and many other 3D mapping software packages available. One good analysis tool that is embedded is to create a profile directly from anywhere within the scene. Let me quickly demonstrate how this works. We find the profile tool under tools. If you had a line file, you would now choose a line file. In my case, I want to digitize it directly on the screen and I hit the lines icon. And now I'll wait for the tool to set itself up. Here are my digitizing options. And also automatically it has been added here a new line as a default color and everything else selected. I just want to digitize a line and I'll start somewhere here. And I want to go on top here. Double click. Now the only other things to create the profile from here is to select a DM resolution. I'm going to use the finest and I'm going to allow a maximum distance between profile vertices of 10 meters because my elevation model is 10 meters. And I hit run. Here a new output profile has been added. We can turn the other one off. We can change the color. And of course we can zoom in. And follow the profile line. We can graph the profile line by highlighting the line itself. And now under feature layer data. And then on the very right under create chart, there is an option at the bottom to create a profile graph. Here's a profile graph, very hard to see at the moment. Let's change the color for better visibility. We could go to properties and make a few edits such as formats and headers, etc. And then you can export the graph into various formats. We have here a different scene, same data. The elevation surface is based on our 10 meter elevation model and with the world imagery draped over the elevation model. The only difference here to the last scene is that the last scene was a local scene and this one now is a global scene. And in the global scene you can set different types of illumination properties. Under illumination 
let's turn on atmospheric effects and also what about stars and halo and simply say OK. And now we see a nice gradual natural looking background that gives the whole scene a much more realistic look. What we can also do is we can define of course where the sun is positioned. By default the sun is positioned at noon but we can use any date and time that we wish and let's start with 6 p.m. of mountain time. And there is our late afternoon scene. And let's try 7 o'clock. And now we see the sunset. And again, you can see how this whole scene here has a pretty realistic looking light coloring because the atmospheric effects have been turned on. Without the atmospheric effects, the scene would not look realistic at all. We want to carry out some visibility analysis using our 10 meter elevation model. I have here displayed the hillshade above it as well. I have a digitized road, our line file, and I have a point file that includes this point over here that I want to use as an observer point for my viewshed analysis. The visibility analysis tools of interest today are here at the bottom of the visibility tool set. And there are three tools of interest. Let me quickly explain the differences between the three. The viewshed analysis lets you choose an elevation model and an observer. This could be a point or a line. And it, of course, requires an output visibility raster file name. You also have the option to output a output above ground level raster file, which when we look at the information button tells us that it, this file would contain the minimum height for each grid cell to make it visible. And so that is simply if you had a tower at a certain location, how high would that tower have to be, maybe behind a hill uh, in order to be visible from another tower. The ViewShare 2 analysis does the same thing with the one difference that it allows you certain ViewShare parameters to set. One important part is that you can set the frequency. That means how often is a certain grid cell visible from multiple locations, let's say along a road. And most importantly, it sets you observer parameters such as a person. A person does not have the eyes down at ground level. A person has eyes in the head, so probably one and a half or more meters above the ground. Imagine you driving in a truck or in a bus. What, what kind of offset parameters would you need there? Imagine you want to connect to communication towers and they must be visible to each other, line of sight. So there you can set a whole bunch of other observer parameters that would be important. And lastly, the visibility tool does the same thing as the ViewShed 2 tool and also lets you all set the different observer parameters. Let's apply the ViewShed 2 tool. I have here my viewshed analysis in the default colors green for visible and pink for non-visible. I'd like to give those a different color to make it more prominent. But what it, instead of doing that we were to simply make the visible area transparent.
and thus allowing us to see what actually is visible from the ground, in this case the lake and mainly forested areas along the mountain slopes. Let me go back to the original color to show you the difference between this one and if we were to increase the height of the observer point, this one over here, by 10 meters. If we are 10 meters higher, then we can see this whole area in addition to the purple area. What about using a road? Here is the view shed along the road, simply again displayed in a different color. And then you wonder why there are certain locations, such as this one here, that are right along the road that are not visible from the road. So there is an supposed error. But please remember the following. Visibility analysis along a line is not carried out along the line. It is only carried out along the vertices. Let's select the road. And pretend to edit the vertices. Here is one. Here is the other one. The visibility is only done from this point and from this point, not from any points in between. So that means if you want to use a linear feature, and there are straight lines along the linear feature, you need to densify that linear feature. You need to add additional vertices, and you can set any kind of distance that you want. And lastly, I want to show you what happens if we output a frequency raster file. In the legend you see we have between 31, so obviously 31 vertices in our segment of our road, and some grid cells are only visible once, and some grid cells, the mountain tops, are visible from everywhere. A Venice data set demonstrates both the power of spatial 3D analysis and scientific visualization. Here is just a satellite image of the city of Venice. We also have a detailed elevation model here, ground above the surface, just a few meters. Highest elevation is almost 11 meters above sea level. And then we have structures. And between the structures, we have numerous canals. And of course, flooding is a constant threat for the city of Venice. There's one particular elevation that is of importance because it symbolizes the worst case scenario for annual tides together with other climate extremes. And that is a sea level that is one 87 higher than normal and of course we can calculate which areas would be flooded. If we strip away the houses again we can see that almost everything in Venice is flooded. And of course we can zoom into features and then not only visualize again with our structures turned on, but also visualizing which areas would not be flooded 
and it would be a good idea to make this color transparent, a non-flooded color. Here we see in detail that the courtyard would not be flooded in parts of this park. Here is another example of a flood impacts analysis study. Again, let's zoom into a neighborhood and turn on the regular monthly high tide value of 1.4 meter. So this is the Aqua Alta. This happens regularly in Venice. Large proportions are underwater at least a few centimeters for several hours sometimes even days. The highest flood experience was in November 2019, the highest flood in over 50 years, and we can see that basically the entire city was underwater. We don't need elevation values in our data sets to make use of the 3D scene capabilities to visualize our data. In this example here, a world map with population per country. Usually we would not display it in this way because it's a coral plate map. And typically we would like to probably do population density. In this case, it makes sense when we display this in 3D. I simply convert this into a 3D scene. And here is the same data set. And we can visualize the data now in a globe. And we can clearly see where the highest population lives. Very clearly, India and China and parts of Indonesia are sticking out very clearly. So in this case here, the story told in this kind of 3D way uh, is in a way much stronger than a color map would otherwise be able to do. And if we change our illumination, turn on atmospheric effects, turn on stars and halo, and just use the current time in Canada, now we have very different types of shading effects. And in this example here, city of Lethbridge with population density, again, we can take this map and convert it to a 3D image, and then we can visualize it in a rather different way. And we can add transparency. And now some neighborhoods are easier to identify. That's all for today. Until next time.